Hi, this is Tyrone Vincent and we are in Frankfurt at a private collection and today I'm joined by beautiful Miss Amy Binding, Editor-in-Chief from Independent Collectors in Berlin. Hi Amy. Hi. <laughs> Um, I started collecting, and the funny thing is, you only find out when you start collecting, when you, when you look back, when you bought the first pieces. And the first piece that I ever bought was um, an amazing um, print, a poster, by Salvador Dali, and I bought that when I was 17 years old. Wow. <laughs> I went to a local record store, and back in the days, the record store had CDs and records and this and that and the other. And you could buy um, posters there, and I found a poster that I fell in love with. And today it's not in the collection because I, um, I uh, let my mom keep it when I moved out. But this is, uh, I want to say officially, that would have been the first piece that I've ever bought. <laughs> we, I don't even think today I'm realizing this is a collection. It's just, it's just things that, um, that, that you croak close to and, and, and it becomes more but you know when I see other people collecting they have like 100, 200, 300, 400 um, or it doesn't matter how many pieces I don't look at it as a collecting I just I just surround myself with things that I really really appreciate. I surround myself with people. <laughs> it's um, when I when I work, I, I meet a lot of people, and this you know you get different influences, and and you have different experiences, and uh, through that you get an appreciation for life, mm -hmm. and that contains so much more than just art pieces. You know, um, I consider it more a collection of craftsmanship through the centuries, mm -hmm. um, because some of the pieces in the collections. Um, are dated as early as the 1500s and some others um, are very contemporary. Being a collector, I want to say there is no process because you go out, you have to start one day to let yourself sink in. Mm -hmm. That's how I call it. So it doesn't really matter if you find it in an art gallery, on a, on a flea market, if an artist is going to give it to you, you go, you go buy it on a fair. It really doesn't matter. The second that you, that you look at a piece and it won't leave your brain, it's attached. And then you just have to test yourself and see if it's, um, if it's a stronger connection. And what I normally do before I get a piece, I sleep over it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's, uh, that's been the process ever since. I normally fall in love with a piece and then I just wait and see if the affection goes away. And if it doesn't go away, I normally go get the piece. The most unusual experience that I had is that I get very sad when I'm away from home for a long time. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's, I consider it to be very geekish and crazy, but I do have um, shots of the pieces on my cell phone. So when I miss them, when I travel a lot, and I do travel a lot, it's there, something is missing. It's, you know, when I stay in hotels and I travel to other countries and you do productions and stuff, uh, which is my everyday life, I miss them, you know? Mm -hmm. Not in a different sense than I miss my friends because obviously, you know, they're, they're people that you drive off and that give you energy, but they're also the little, little energizers, like batteries, they recharge me. And the biggest benefit being a collector is that it's, it's, you live with your pieces. It's something that you can never do in a museum. You know, you get up in the morning and they're there and, and you discover different things and uh, you might take some down and you hang some other pieces up. You get to play with them and that's the funny part. Since it's so much work, I don't do it as much as I used to. Um, with time, you become a little more relaxed and you allow people to sink into your brain. It happens. Um, of course, you have favorite pieces and then you have to force yourself to sometimes let go and give other pieces in the collection a chance to shine. You know, there's a, obviously, we all don't have enough walls. Um, so you have to take rotations and some pieces that I'm reluctant of, they take a, they take a longer time to sink into me. Mm -hmm. I have an amazing work by uh, Marcus Lippertz that I've had for 15 years. And I've only hung it the last three years because before I took it out and I, it, I moved it back into storage and I moved it out and moved it back and then I tried something and it didn't work. And then eventually I had an idea what the, what the wall is going to look like, that this piece is going to go on and what it needs to be surrounded with in order to work and that really takes time. 
I'm not searching. If you are a human being and you're, um, you, are, you are easy with yourself, then you allow things to sink into your brain. And I could literally walk down the streets of Brazil or in, in Marrakesh or in, um, in Tokyo and I'm open and I'm willing to see anything there is. It doesn't matter if it's comic art, calligraphy, oil paintings, sculpture work, installations. It's, I, there is no filter. I'm, I'm trying to take in as much as I can. And the funny thing is, it's just like you, you, you take a piece of clay and you throw it on the wall. If it sticks on your, on your brain and on your mind, mm -hmm. it's, it, it has something, it, it triggers something in me. Mm -hmm. And then the process is, um, after I'm being triggered, I'm trying to figure out if I could fall in love with this. You know, uh, sometimes it's an immediate love and you'd be like, ooh, I gotta have this. And I'm gonna show you some pieces later that where this happened. And then sometimes you have some pieces that come from behind. Mm -hmm. they, they, they pop up and then you do something else for a little while, then they pop, against, they pop up against somewhere else. And then you, it, your, your brain starts working. And um, this is the work with the, this is the, the, this has been the case with the work from Suza Kajewska. I love this work. I know you do. And, and you told me, <laughs> she told me so on occasions. And the funny thing is, I love it too. The first time I discovered the works by Suza Kajewska was when I did an upload online. Mm -hmm. And this, um, one of her iconic shots is um, two twins um, holding each other. One is looking to the camera and the other one is leaning his head on the other one's shoulder. And that was an image that didn't leave my head for such a long time, you know. And when I dived into her work to realize um, how intense it really is and how personal it really is, I just had to contact her and buy some works for the collections, you know. And this has been, this has been with me ever since. I don't want to say collectors have a tendency to manipulate artists. Um, you know, you don't want to get yourself into a situation where you take a role of a gallerist who's trying to sell yes. and then he speaks to the artist and be like hey I sold 15 of your works because people really liked them and that even without saying would come to the effect that he's suggesting he should maybe do more yeah. so I'm befriended with artists but it's a very platonic friendship it's a it's a greeting it's a checking up of but it's not a discussion of work. Sometimes when, you dis when I discuss something with an artist, it's more to understand what his inspiration was, but I'm very holding back on giving an artist my feedback on what I think, because I think it's manipulating him. And artists need, to, they need to be free in what they do, otherwise it's, it's, it has no value for us as mankind. It's, it's a validation with, without a suggested course of future. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you buy a work now and you don't buy a work later, then the artist simply knows that at this moment, at this time, you've liked the work so much that you bought it, mm -hmm. you know? But you not going back to the artist and be like, well, if you had one in green and one in blue and one in black, I might I, I maybe buy them too, more, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and I think it's important that, you, that we all understand there's different phases and, and, and practices that you may like about an artist and you may don't like about an artist, you know. Um, they, they have to experiment and not every experiment is something that they're satisfied with and not every experiment that an artist does is something that you're satisfied with. And you have to become cool about it, you know. You, you check up on them regularly and see how they develop and sometimes a development that's important for them um, is maybe a route that you cannot follow, but you should still appreciate it because somebody is doing something for themselves in order to, to, to brighten their, you know, abilities. And that's something I really appreciate. Well, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. It's, um, it's, it depends on where you are as a collector. Um, I follow some artists that, that are in my collections just simply because I'm curious. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes um, you, you need to let them go, just like, you know, you need to let go and, and, and come back at a later point. It's like you're walking through the forest and one takes um, one way, the other one takes the other way. And then you connect later in life. And it, it needs to be like that, I think. It's a healthy relationship um, because sometimes 
other people have to buy work and the artist has to reach out to other collectors to, to get a um, an, an successful career and to, to be known. Mm -hmm. You know, he cannot just deal with you. And to occupy an artist is also not, is not is, I don't think is a correct practice, you know. Sometimes you just have to let him go. That's an interesting question. There is pieces in the collection that are not on display because um, I feel uncertain about them. But when you go back, and this is a going back in your, in your state of mind that you used to have, then you, you are able to understand why you bought it at that point of time, even though it doesn't serve a purpose in the collection today. You develop. And to buy a piece that you're not satisfied with is probably the most decisions that you, the most important decision you can ever make because that will it will elevate you eventually. Mm -hmm. If you do not make mistakes, um, you have to make mistakes. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I know people heard it heard it many many times, um, but it's the same it's the same thing um, with when you raise kids, when you when you build a family, when you get a dog, you have to make mistakes to understand <laughs> where you need to go. Yeah. And this is the same thing with an art collection. Now the mistakes um, in an art collection, they will literally teach you what you need to understand to maybe not buy such a piece again. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they're still here, you know, they're, they're, they're still in, in my, in my, in my um, close surroundings, but I haven't hung them because for me it's not necessary to see them right now. I've never been asked that question. Um, it's, I, I want to say the, the mistakes that you make are the more important works because they'll help you sharpen your sense and your vision and, and that's, that's priceless. Mm -hmm. And which piece for you um, like, uh, stands out as, as the one which you first saw and you just knew instantly? Because for me, I'm like looking at it right there, <laughs> and I love that piece, and I just wondered, yeah. Like, what do you What do you like about the piece? I just the the colors, the form of him. I don't know. I mean, ever since that the first time when you showed me him, I was completely captivated by this. Now I'm gonna. By this, by this footballer. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind. Um, this footballer is drawn by the same artist that made this post-war abstract woman. And that's when you deal with development. Um, between that and that is 15 years of development as an artist. And that's, that's, that's where I get the energy from. This is amazing to have, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, but it's, it's becoming more powerful when you know where the artist started and where he went, you know. And that's, that's as a collector, you have to be curious, you have to dig, you have to want to know, you have to research, you have to talk to people to understand what the journey is all about. Without this, he was, would have never been able to make that. Before we talk about that, you have to understand being, a, a, I don't want to say a smaller scale collector because for some other people this collection would, would already look immensely yes. developed, but it's not because I, I see a lot of um, collectors that have different pieces, more pieces, more ability, financial ability. So to sort yourself in into a, you know, slash worker's kid, independent, um, trying to come by artworks kind of collector guy, um, this is really important. Where would you find Arts. You mm -hmm. can find them on a fair, which you know you, you can buy photography from from Sousa there. Um, you can go to a gallery, and I have gallery works in this collection. And then there's another way that you can go to. You can connect yourself with people that love art, mm -hmm. and they give you tips. And this is this is this has been the case with um, this work by um, Rudolf Nikolai. Um, the story is um, is an interesting story. There's a lot of amazing art out there that is not being traded in the art market. Mm -hmm. It's simply been forgotten. And this is, this is one of these cases. The guy studied between um, 1946 and 1951 at the Nachfolgeschule uh, from the Bauhaus and um, was never majorly discovered. He was a part of the Darmstadt Session, which is a good thing um, to be in. And, and he always experimented. He was very successful as an artist because he always sold paintings. Mm -hmm. Now, for an artist, that would be the gratification that you seek. 
But today, in today's world, you know, if you don't get traded in in the in the in the primary markets and the fairs, it's a different it's a different yeah. challenge. It's a completely different market. Now, this artist passed away 20 years ago, and I was invited by um, friends of mine who who are specialized in clearing um, these kind of estates to take a look at it mm. and um, to step into an, an 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 atelier by an artist that's been abandoned for 20 years. And you see work that hasn't spoken to, to I want to say mankind, because if there is no humans around, it doesn't speak. Um, was an absolutely incredible experience. Mm -hmm. um, you see, the first work I saw was this one. It was dusted. It was it was it was it was in the in the further back, and I will not forget it like today. Um, it's it, it. I saw it and I said I have to have it, mm -hmm. and um, it was not easy because the the widow um, was trying to keep the estate together. So we made a deal, and the deal is that I'll dedicate extra time that I had um, from from being a collector in trying to see and find ways if I could make his work known again, um, and um, we succeeded. Mm -hmm. It's I, I was able to do promotion. You know, to get something into the collection sometimes helps you to do promotion for yourself. But it's not about promoting just your collection, it's about promoting the idea of your collection. And if the idea of the collection sometimes is contemporary art mixed in with cultural um, heritage, mixed in with forgotten artists of the 20th century, then this would classify the, the, the core of the collection, I think. Mm -hmm. And then especially in this case, we, and I'm very happy to announce that we um, have a commitment with the biggest um, gallery in Frankfurt and they're going to currently put their exhibition together. Amazing. Yes. And when is this going to take This is going to be um, this year in summer, 2018. I think their time frame was anywhere between May and, and fall. And um, if this is something that you can give to an artist 20 years after mm -hmm. he, um, he deceased and he passed away, I think this could be an obligation for, and for a collector as well. You know, sometimes collectors work socially, they do uh, education programs, mm -hmm. they do travel programs, they do um, artist internships, you know, or they give you residencies and stuff like that. But um, maybe a call could be that you discover art and you show people that mm -hmm. there's, there's things out there that have been forgotten. I'm not a patron and I'm not, a, I'm not on a board yet. yet. <laughs> Well, if, if, if people, if, if anybody decides that you have something that you want to contribute, and I've been asked to do stuff, um, um, you know, involving work with artists and, and, and hosting night tours and stuff like that. Yeah. If, if this is my involvement and people think I have something to share and they ask me, then I'm happy to jump on board. But then again, time is really limited. You know, if you told me before how much work it really, really is to to host your own collection I would have probably just been <laughs> absolutely <laughs> surprised because you know you, you don't want to say no but it's 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 really work mm -hmm. if you're a young collector and you know you buy one piece and two pieces then it's 20 and 40 and 60 and you have to find a place where you put the ones that you don't currently hang then you have to wrap them up you have to transport them somewhere they go back and forth you have to insure them you know you are faced with so many challenges that I didn't know about that it's, it's really surprising. It's really a full-time, a second full-time job. Mm -hmm. And this explains you why I'm not a member yet of, um, of, a, of a museum or I have a patronage because my time is already very limited. I, I invest a lot of time in research and looking and traveling and, and, and speaking to people. The most, the most amazing connections that you will ever make is speaking to an artist about his work, mm -hmm. you know, without manipulating him. Once again, this is very important. If you go there like a blank piece of paper and you really want to know, they will tell you stuff about their work that you would never guess mm -hmm. in your wildest dreams. And that's, that's one of the most amazing things that I've ever experienced. But, um, you know, if I have a little more time, maybe I'll join the board. But for right now, the education is when my friends come by and they be like, hey, what is this? And I'm like, what do you see? Yeah. You know, and this is how you intrigue people. And I know that some of my friends went out and bought themselves art pieces because they, begot, they, they began to be more blunt and to be more confident mm -hmm. and to be, let's just do it. And that's, if that's what I can do, 
to help people sell art and discover art, then that's what I do. And I think not everything has to be a big idea. Some of the ideas and the influences you have are very, very small. They're on an the everyday, everyday kind of life level. And um, I always feel when I'm looking at your collection is that um, in a way you're kind of shunning the art market because you're completely collecting from, from passion and uh, things that really speak to you. Um, and what's your opinion on this, on, on, on the art market and like, you know, there's good art and bad art? Oh my God. <laughs> you really giving me questions. Um, <laughs> and I, I will answer you from the bottom of my heart. Please. Um, the art market is a market where people sell you product. And you have to understand if this is the way that you want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've been a small collector. I've been ignored and I've been not appreciated because I simply didn't say I have a check and I want to spend it. But does that not make you want to stop or does it not deter you to... Well, I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not the kind of person to stop and, and I hope other younger collectors young, not as far as an age, but maybe as far as an experience, um, are, not, um, are not disappealed by that. Mm -hmm. You simply have to find another way, you know. Um, I live in the center of Frankfurt, and uh, close by is the Gallery Street that you and I are going to check out a little later. And when you see this, I've been living in this apartment for 20 years, if you see the art come and go and change, you see that what they sell is, is, is something that has a value for the market. Mm -hmm. It might don't have a value for you. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's, just, it's just really, really hard to determine if this is the route that you want to go to. I think there is so much more art, more art that is not part of the market that you might want to take a look at, you know? And um, I, I personally, I find it a challenge. I go to these art fairs, as you know, and I see art from, 20, from 2017, 2016, 2015, 14. And I'm like, somewhere when I go to these fairs and I see it in such an overwhelming amount, I wonder if, if, if it's just made for the market or if it's made because of somebody's determination. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a difference, you know, you can see it out there. Um, you see some art that you that you think is amazing because it's based on a practice, it's based on a craftsmanship, and you see you. I I believe that you can tell if a if a if an artist has been manipulated by the market. Mm -hmm. I I I don't know what it is. It's a feeling. You look at some work, and you and you think it's a compromise. It's a compromise to be liked. It's a compromise to be sold. Mm -hmm. It's a compromise to be bought. And this is something that I'm very, very careful about, you know. So therefore, I look and look and look and look and look. And um, um, the decision in, in buying art for me depends on if I believe the story the artist is trying to tell me. And, and most of it, most of it that I have is, is somebody that's, that's struggled. Not that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege to struggle and it makes it more real. But it's, you, you, you see how artists deconstruct their own work because it's so, fa so painful for them to understand which, which route they're going on. And some of the stuff that's out there is just too commercial. I don't think I have one. The, the funny thing is, I, I was, being a young collector, and once again, this is based on experience, not on age, I was, I was, I was grabbing for straws. You read books on how to collect uh, top ten mistakes that yeah. everybody does, and top, uh, 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 and you, you have smart books written, and you, you should go out and socialize with gallerists and, and keep your ears open. And they go, oh my God, you have to buy him because he's going to be um, has going to have a value in, in five years or five million. You know, if you discard that idea, ever since mankind developed. There was a creative practice. It doesn't matter if you talk about the caves in, in, in France, where you have the handprints and the, and the elephants and the tigers um, um, drawn on the wall. Everything has its time. And even the most successful artist at some time, most celebrated artist, was forgotten in the, in the turn of the last 500, 600, 700, 1,000 years, mm -hmm. because everything has its, its time. And if you just literally buy pieces that convince you from the bottom of your heart that you believe in 
then there is nothing that you could ever do wrong because the, the only thing that an, that an art piece has to do is it has to make you smile. Mm -hmm. It has to inspire you. It has to give you energy. It has to be there for you. It has to give you a reflection of, of what you seem and what you aim for. And then it doesn't matter if it's five euro or five thousand or five million. If it can't do that, it has no value. It's interesting that you mention it. I work very contemporary. Um, in, the, in the work that we do, you work with new materials, with young people, 16, 18, 20. They have different ideas about communication, about art they like, about digital art. <clears throat> about mobility, mm -hmm. um, then we in our shows, we use new lighting techniques, installation techniques, uh, stage design, architecture. Um, you know, all these influences from work are so amazingly contemporary mm -hmm. that for some reason, my collection took a different turn. It's more, it's more groundwork. Um, and, and, and groundwork refers to craftsmanship. Um, as I told you earlier, the, the earliest work that you'll find is from 1500. It's a, it's a beautiful um, graphic um, by Albrecht Dürer. And that it's coming down to somebody explaining you how a process works. And then he translated the process into new ideas. And this is what my life is based on. Everything that I draw today was shaped 40 years ago. And this is, this is the same thing with our collection. I look at, even if I look at these figures, for me, they're, they're timeless, and if timeless could be contemporary, you know, something for me is not just contemporary because it's made the last 20 years. It could have the approach of having a technique that will never go out of style, um, and, and, and sometimes some of these techniques will be forgotten because in the, in the modern world, they have no more use. Mm -hmm. And that makes it more contemporary because it's part of our heritage, how we getting from A to B. And this is what some of these works um, for me symbolize. It's a, it's, it's a development in human heritage mm -hmm. at different points in time. It's amazing to just start. A lot of people are, you know, the, the funny thing is I just watched, an, uh, watched a, um, a documentation by um, Karl Lagerfeld. It's a very new one, it's from 2018, uh, where he makes a funny statement. And he was like, yeah, well, you know, that guy is like, how old, 75? Uh, or, or 70, 75? And he was like, yeah, these days, everybody's trying to be art collector and is trying to implement it with being serious. Um, and and um, it's a trend. And the funny thing is, it doesn't have to be a trend. No. If you make, if you take art and you make it your art, it, it has a completely different dynamic, mm. you know? It doesn't, it doesn't depend on your budget. It doesn't depend on your, on your loft or, or, your, or the size of your house. Yeah. If you have an idea of where you want to go in your, in your personal um, energy, it will accompany you. And this is something that you can achieve with as little as the, the small, it, you can achieve it with trading. Um, the, the funny thing is what people don't know, and I'm gonna show you later, uh, some of the most valuable pieces I have, I traded in mm -hmm. with somebody who wanted something else that I could let go of. Mm -hmm. And this could be art collecting as well. Art collecting is not about the items because it's, it's about being connected. It's about speaking to somebody about something that enlightens you and something that you know emotionalizes you. That, that's what art collecting is about. And the, the, the way in speaking to people sometimes you acquire these items. They, there's, there's, there's things that you see that you would love to not let go ever again, you know, as long as you can. Now you and I know old collectors are at one point let go of their collection. They either donated it to a museum yeah. and or they, they give it to the family or they sell it all. And I know this is going to happen to my collection as well. And this is why I think the whole idea of the collection is a more contemporary one. Mm -hmm. It's here for now and not for a future and not for the past. It's here for now and, and anybody can achieve this. change is that I know more about myself. 
It's 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 like you you train your being for your own value. So would you say that was the key to having a successful collection? Or a, what is, or, or, what the, is a successful what, collection? What, what's a successful collection? It's it's successful if you if you if a piece bores you, an artwork bores you after some time, then maybe it wasn't the right piece for you. It doesn't make it wrong and it doesn't make it a bad piece. It's just maybe not the right piece for you. Now, if the success of my collection would be that these pieces are still here, then that's the success of the collection. They, they were strong enough to support me for, for, for all that time. And I, you know, that, that separates a dealer from a collector. Mm -hmm. Are you able to let go? Or are you able not to let go? And so far, I have not sold a single piece ever again, which is incredible. Yeah, that's <laughs> un unheard of, yeah. No, 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 it's, it's really incredible when you think about it. I've given two or three away just as a gift. Yeah. But I could, you know, there's, you know, it's value is an issue mm -hmm. in, in the modern art world. And, and sometimes you, you, you may be strained for money. Like, you know, a lot of the biggest collections break apart mm -hmm. because people all of a sudden are financially not as successful anymore. And then luckily enough, they are able to sell pieces of the collection, which they probably have a hard time with, but it helps them to survive. Mm -hmm. And this is also, a, this is a purpose, not also a purpose, but it's a purpose of a collection, mm -hmm. you know. I have became more confident. I'm, I'm, the confidence is coming to, it's, it, I feel it when I speak to people. Before I was like, I was quiet. You know, you go to places and you go to gallery openings. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. You, you go to openings in museums and in galleries and, and you go to your first art fair and you're afraid to be in a booth too long because somebody walks up to you and be like, so, <laughs> you like this piece? And, you, and you'll be like, Bum. <laughs> you don't know what to say because you really don't know if you like it or not. You just, you just want to be around it and you, 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 want to, you want to experience what everybody else experiences. And, um, and the same thing I said about the artist. Don't be manipulated being a collector. Mm -hmm. Make your collection about you. Don't be afraid if you, if you like all your artworks to be green. Don't be afraid if you love to collect zebra looks and designs or patterns. Whatever is what you want to collect is what you are as a collector. And, you know, I, I've let go of the fact that people come in and re-evaluate your collection for yourself. You, don't, you shouldn't need anybody to do that, you know. It's nice when somebody comes in and be like, oh yeah, this piece is of value, like, like this painting over there, because it's, it's, it, it classifies an important step from one, um, from one section of art into the next. You know, I necessarily didn't know that when I bought the painting. Mm -hmm. I just knew I liked the painting. When somebody comes in and be like, you should be happy that you have it because it stands for something. Then I'm like, whoo, I bought one and I got two. You know, <laughs> and this is, this is how I look at some of the things. As everybody's trying to be smart and everybody's trying to be educated and everybody's trying to know so much. I just go out like a little kid and I look at things that I like and sometimes hopefully I'm able to take them home and sometimes you are not able to take them home and you still like them and you hope you see them again. Where do you go and find these pieces? Is it do you ever use Instagram, for example? Mm. <laughs> um, I use Instagram extensively just because of my job. Everybody I work with has mm. on Instagram. You know, I work with, with younger models and if you want to reach them, you better have Instagram, yeah. otherwise you, you can't get them. But um, it's a consistent stream of what's going on out there. But if you ask me if I found Oh, you know what? I want to correct myself. I was just about to say, if you would ask me if I found a single piece of work on Instagram that I've ever bought, I would have said no. But I've most recently discovered an artist in Berlin, a young lady that does the most amazing paper collages. And she was able to trigger my excitement to, um, to a level that I want to go see her. And this has never happened. So for me, this is a, this is a new approach and a new way. So let's see what's coming out of that. It's not the finding, you know, um, uh, you need to travel, um, n you need to go out. No, let's say it, it's, let's put it in a, different, um, in a different order. You need to get out, you need to travel, you need to see people, you need to see art. 
this is part of a training boot camp that everybody will go through extensively for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Because as long as you live, you will see new things every day. The difference is communication today. If you were a collector back in the day, um, you had to be a newspaper mogul or a TV station host, and people would be like, oh, he's an art collector because he's, he's popular, he goes, spends big cash on, on, on work, and everybody in the newspaper knows about it. Today, as an art collector, you are able to communicate your ideas. Mm -hmm. And when I first decided um, to, to, to go public, that's a big decision for a young collector, you know, mm -hmm. you'd be like, hey, do I want to share this? Do I want to share this shot or this piece or this work? Not being sure that people like it. <laughs> you know, if you post something, the chances that people like it or don't like it is 50%. You know what the most amazing thing is? And this, is, this has never happened that you post something and people say, oh my God, this is ugly. <laughs> I'd be so hurt by that. Oh my well, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't be hurt. I'll tell you why. Because you're confident. If you, if you reflect about an artwork, then you bought it. You dish money out. You bought it. You carry it home. It goes on your wall. You have, you have, a, you have the confidence to defend it. Mm. You know? And that's the, that's the most interesting part about it. Um, and most amazingly, I've never received, and, and I, have an, I have an Instagram account on the, on the collection, which I do not post a collection. This is funny, you know? Um, and this shows you once again, why do I have an Instagram account that doesn't feature the collection? Because it features the idea of what I like. There is some pieces in there from the collection because I think they're simply so amazing that I want to share them with other people. But on the Instagram, I share my idea of inspiration of things that if I had the money I would like to buy because I think they're absolutely amazing by technique, by craftsmanship, by color, by composition. And this is, this is intriguing other people and I think why the account is going so well that people do realize I'm not running around with a drum and be like, I'm so great, this is the greatest collection on earth and you need to see it all. It's more like, a, hey, I collect, my collection is something completely different and this is other stuff that I like and I want to share that with you and people, the response has been amazing. Uh, that'll be interesting. Now, you know, the collection started um, with the Salvador Dali post that's very surrealistic. And this is all I could afford when you're like um, 17, 18 years old, you just finished school. Then a poster back in the days was 100 marks, mm. you know, 100 Deutsche Mark. And that's a lot of money for a kid in that age. Now, um, the, the transition then went to me being, and this has an influence on, on how I collect, I'm, a, I'm adopted. Then you have the skin color. If you are a collector, you really have to question yourself. Um, is it okay to buy um, white young guys photographer, uh, taken take on a picture um, by a young photographer from Poland? Yes, it is, because you, will, you need to challenge who you are with your collection. That's what you need to challenge. Then you know a lot of people look at this stuff and be like, wow, you have really a lot of deep African stuff. Well, I almost said I'm not African. We don't know that. But if you are a young man of color, what kind of art do you look at? Mm -hmm. Do you look at the white marble statue in the Vatican? Or, you know, where, where, is this, where is this all going? And now you probably understand why you have such a variety mm -hmm. in the collection. It's, it's, it's the collection of somebody that's testing his boundaries and that is more uncertain than certain. Mm -hmm. and, and this is probably one of the core, the core messages of the, of the collection. It's I'm in life and I'm, I'm here now. And the now is, con contains so many things in 360 mm -hmm. that, I, that I would not dare to limit myself and be like, oh, it needs to be post-war. Oh, if I collect African, it can't be a church sculptures from the 60s. If I collect church sculptures, it can't be post-war uh, post, um, uh, post pop art, German pop art. It can be whatever it needs to be in order for you to step forward. It's a collection of now. And now means wherever I'm mentally at, this is where the collection is going to be. You know, if um, um, 
I've just most recently bought more works from, from uh, Mudolf Nikolai, which are completely different from this. It's going to blow your mind. <laughs> because if, you know, if, if I'm a collector and um, I say I only want to collect Picassos, you leave out so much other great stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah, I, I know people need to focus on one thing, but then again, who ever told anybody that you need to focus on something? You know, if whatever, if you're fine with not focusing, then that, that's what it is, you know. Tips are, people don't need tips. Um, I don't think young collectors um, don't really need tips. Don't be afraid, um, ever. Um, and this is all I'm going to say. There is nobody that can tell you what's good for you. Mm -hmm. Only yourself can tell you. But what I'm going to refer to is value through quality. When I, understood, when I read all these Ratgeber books, you know, how to be an art collector, how to collect art right, uh, 10 do's and don'ts in, in the art collecting world, I was like, ah, I made a list. I was like, oh <laughs> don't ever blah, 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 blah. And uh, socialize with galleries. You don't have to do all of this. You have to determine the value that you are willing to pay for an art piece. Mm -hmm. And I, I recommend if you if you remember that good art has always been good art, it will never lose its value mm -hmm. in quality, then you might have to pay a little more for it, which is absolutely okay. And if you can't do it in one step, as a young collector, you'd be surprised how many people are willing to help you yeah. in, in buying this, this piece that's important for you if they feel your sheer emotion that you have. Mm. There is pieces in the collections, in the collection that I have paid off after over six months because I couldn't dish out the money like that. I could show you, I could show you papers where a piece came up in an auction and I said, okay, it's going to be 10,000. I make two five here. I still have that in the account and this is coming in and this is coming in. And if, um, if it's not going to be sold for this price, I'm saving 2000. I have sheets mm -hmm. <clears throat> with calculations try yeah. for me to try to understand how I'm going to be able to buy this piece. I think that for me is the, uh, the like kind of symbol of a, of a real passion collector. It's like you just make it work, you know, it's... Make it work and, and, and if, you, if you want a tip, I deal with, I don't want to say elderly people, that sounds so wrong, <laughs> <laughs> but I deal with, I, okay, let's, let's rephrase it. I deal with people that have more experience based yeah. on years than I am. And you know what the first thing is that I learned? Don't ever spend money on art that you do not have. Ever. That's a very good tip. <laughs> this, is, this is probably the only thing that I want to share with anybody. You, mm -hmm. can, you can window shop, you can go out, you can talk, you can put it on layaway, as we say, and you can pay it off. But make sure it, you don't finance it with money you do not have, mm -hmm. because it will tarnish the energy, piece, the yeah. peace. It, it, will just, it will be a reminder of you of you not being in a happy place. And mm -hmm. I've, I've been sticking with this ever since I started collecting. It's, you know, sometimes you have to use, you, you need a couple of months payments and you, you pay it off as you, as you go along, but it's money that you have. It's something that you're in control of. And this is, this is probably the only, the only suggestion that I would give to anybody who starts collecting art. Don't go over your head, ever. That's a great piece of advice. Because yeah. it is so tempting. It is really tempting. And sometimes when I wanted a piece really bad, I have um, most recently was trying to buy a, um, a painting by Willy Sitter that would have been absolutely perfect in this collection. And everybody was supporting me. The auction house was supporting me. I went there and I said, hey, I, you know, the money was asked for. I doubled the amount and I was keeping my fingers crossed now. This piece ended up being sold for triple the amount of money than I went in for. And this is the moment where, as a collector, even as a young collector, you have to remember, if you're supposed to have it, 
you will yeah. get it. <laughs> if you're not supposed to have yeah. it, you won't get it. And if you try too hard, you might get something that you're not supposed to have from the mm -hmm. start. And this is, when you, when you go by this and you put it all together, now you know already, I don't spend money that I don't have. Um, I sleep over the, 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 um, the, the, the buys that I'm trying to do. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, you always have the ground rule, if you're supposed to have it, you will get it. Then it's fine, you know, sometimes, and you have to realize this. I know, and now I'm referring to age. If you're younger, then you have no patience. Did you realize that when, when pieces disappear off the market and they don't go into family that are multi-billion dollar heavy, they reappear in the market within the next 15, 20 years? So you might get another chance to, to buy that piece in an auction or in, an, in a gallery. Nothing is lost forever. These, all these works are bigger than you and I ever. You know, they're gonna find a new home. Well, if I'm not gonna be, they're gonna be sold again, they're gonna be traded again. So yeah. you spend time with them. If, if you know this, you don't become so eager and so, Arr! they're just here for the time they have, and I enjoy them. That's a great way of looking at it. It's like that you're kind of the, the place where they, where they stay are. for this time, and then... I have, pe I have pieces that are 500 years old. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And then, then my duty is to send them off. Yeah. You know, I have them now and, and sometimes you just have to remind yourself that this is not set in stone. No. You can do whatever you like. But this is, if there's any advice, then that would be it.